Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my channel. This is Maiten Guevara saying good evening to all of you, and uh, this will be the first of my series regarding alternate elections. And we would do case-to-case uh, -case scenarios with different candidates, and uh, this time I'm beginning with the 1948 election between Strom Thurmond, the senator from South Carolina, and Harold Stason, the senator from Minnesota. So, John Thurmond is, as we all know, a conservative Southern Democrat, and he was a candidate in his own right in 1948, and um, he was ardently against desegregation in the South. And Harold Stason, on the other hand, is more of a moderate Republican who favors a lot of New Deal programs at the same time was hard on defense. And he was also a critic of anti-communist hearings done in the Senate under Joseph McCarthy. And technically, um, Stason really um, rallied against that, especially um, when most of his uh, most of his constituency in the Minnesota were being damaged, or the reputations of those people were getting damaged by the hearings initiated by Joseph McCarthy of Wisconsin. So our scenario here is that Strom Thurmond succeeds in blocking Truman's nomination for president, so which means to say Truman got um, rejected by the Southern Democrats, and having more clout in picking the nominee, they have, uh, the Southern delegation just decided that Thurman must be the, the, the nominee of the Democrats instead of Truman. On the other hand, on the Republican side, Harold Stason defeats Robert Dewey in a series of debates which caused him to win the nomination. So both candidates are technically um, technically the representation of their parties as of this time, and um, Thurmond was more technically conservative on social issues, but he was also openly for some programs of the government, especially those that um, uh, have positive impact on the South. Harold Stason, on the other hand, is more of a rural Republican who would favor uh, farm subsidies for uh, the people of the Midwest, which he is from. So this would be an intriguing, interesting um, race. So the scenarios would, re would remain the same. I mean, the Berlin airlift would still be conducted. President Truman would have still continued that. Uh, he would continue to aid West Berlin in a, uh, gaining, the, in a providing, President Truman would remain providing, sorry, uh, he, would, he would still continue to provide aid to Ber West Berlin despite um, the Soviet blockade in that, um, in that, in that country, which is East Germany. At the same time, the Marshall Plan would have still continued and would have continued to rolled, continue to have been rolled out, especially to those countries that were uh, war stricken and were uh, deprived of uh, money, especially when all of it was uh, cost the cost of war. Okay, so we're going to start from R to R, and R to R back then is different, so you're going to see a different um, states um, being called. So, would Thurman continue to be hard on communism? Yes, I think he would still be, uh, he would um, remain uh, true to the democratic platform, but he will of course take away all of those issues or all of those platforms regarding integrating the army, all of those regarding civil rights, which would probably um, dampen um, Stason's um, appeal to the South, because technically he was also for civil rights, 
However, Thurmud would actually have more hard time in winning the Northeast. He would have a hard time winning some Western states, and that would probably give states in the early advantage as they campaign. So we're going to see on what swing states would arrive because Thurmud would close down the South and states would probably close down the Northeast and so and so forth. So we're going to see. Okay, Indiana would go for Stason because Stason is from the Midwest and uh, most Indianans back then were solidly Republican, especially in this area right here. This entire area right here is technically as Republican as they can get. So Vermont will go red. It's hard to believe, but uh, back then, Vermont is one of the most Republican states in the Union because of its rural uh, areas. It's still pretty rural now, but uh, that's why many people say that Vermont is an anomaly to the rural Republican um, strategy because Vermont is pretty much progressive in, 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 in almost everything now, but yet it's still pretty rural. And it didn't really change its, or the number of its electoral votes did not add up. It continues to remain free. Okay, so moving south, South Carolina would go for Thurmond, Georgia would go for Thurmond, and uh, Kentucky would be competitive, Virginia would be competitive, so uh, New Hampshire would go for Statham, so that would be the first star right here, and uh, I think Florida would be, Florida would be um, uh, in play, so I'm going to leave that so far. So uh, we have 20 electoral votes for Thurman. Stacey has 20, so let's continue on. West Virginia would go for Thurman. And this is like the opposite of Vermont. West Virginia was one of the most democratic states in the Union back in the day, and it has eight electoral votes before. And uh, I think Thurman would uh, probably have problems with the unions because he was pretty conservative on fiscal issues. So I really think he will have a, a, a hard time winning the Midwest, but West Virginia technically uh, is pretty more uh, democratic, so I think they'll stay democratic at this time. Same thing, North Carolina would go for uh, Strom Thurmond. I think the Southern Coalition would be in full force in uh, gathering up uh, votes for Thurmond, especially this was the Solid South. And, um, yeah, so Ohio, on the other hand, I think Ohio can be easily called for Harold Stason. I think Ohio is a Midwestern state. I think it's really not, it's really going to oppose Strom Thurmond and uh, his opposition to civil rights. I think Stason would make civil rights a key issue here, especially if that comes into, him, into his advantage, especially that uh, Truman's gone and was blocked from getting renominated, he will use the, the civil rights platform to advance votes for Republicans, and that would make the Republicans a bit more centered to the left uh, of many uh, uh, in regards to civil rights. So uh, now at the second hour, we can now call that uh, station leads 45 to 42. So. We're going to leave Illinois because Illinois was uh, a, particularly a swing state and Thurmond would have to somewhat commit to uh, getting the union vote because the union vote before heavily was heavily important to um, Strom Thurmond or to the Democrats. Okay, moving on the South, we're going to we're going to close in with the South. I think. Um, Tennessee would go blue, and of course the South would technically go blue, while uh, Massachusetts, I think, would be close, Rhode Island would be close, but Connecticut, New Jersey would not vote for Thurmond, Delaware and Maryland would not go for Thurmond. That's why I'm giving Maine, I'm also giving Massachusetts and Rhode Island for Harold Stason, because he will really gather up votes in the Northeast once Thurmond becomes the nominee for the Democrats. So we're leaving flyover states away. So states now leads 105 to 74, and 
um, if we're going to add Oklahoma station would expand that lead to 115 to 74. So I'm not factoring in who will they pick as vice president because I really don't know who will Statham pick, but I think he'll pick somebody from the West Coast, Republican, while Thurman would have to pick somebody from the Midwest because he won't stand a chance without compromising and uh, meeting in the middle of the Democratic establishment, despite, you know, the strength of the Solid South. So, speaking of the Solid South, I'm giving Arkansas to Thurman. I'm giving Louisiana to Strom Thurmond, I'm giving Texas to Strom Thurmond, and Texas still had fewer electoral votes, so now he somewhat evens up uh, the the race with 116 to 115. While I'm already, I'm about to give states in Pennsylvania. I'm about to give him Kansas and all of the states up here the Dakotas, Nebraska, Wyoming, Colorado, New Mexico, and Arizona. So now he has 189 to 116. So New York would probably be a not a, I think it won't be a question, but I think Stason would win uh, New York because it's pretty much liberal on, on the uh, civil rights issue. And um, I'm also giving states in Utah, I'm also giving him Montana and Nevada. I think he's pretty strong in the West Coast, and that gives him more and more chances of winning here. And I think, in my for my money, I think uh, Thurmond would still carry Florida, because Florida was still still was sparsely populated, so I don't think he can... Uh, can lose Florida because uh, it was still pretty much southern and uh, just for uh, just to make ends meet I'm also giving him Kentucky because Kentucky also um, tends to be more southern in identity okay so uh, we're continuing on Idaho would go for Stason and California would go for Stason that puts him up the top over the top here and uh That really um, makes Stason would now become the 34th president of the United States, and uh, the rest of the states here are still up for grabs because I think Thurman will pick somebody from the Midwest, and I think Stason will pick somebody from the West. So I'm ready to give Washington and uh, Oregon to Harold Stason. So. Stason would be a good candidate had he been the nominee, but uh, he will face a lot of opposition, especially back then with the conservative wing of the Republican Party in the name of Robert Taft, who would rather uh, side with a conservative Democrat rather than a liberal Republican. But as of this time, however, Stason will probably moderate his views on the economy. He will moderate the views on the Marshall Plan. But again, he won't really say that in campaigning because the Marshall Plan is definitely approved by the public as of that time. Okay, so I left Virginia, Missouri, Illinois, and the Midwestern states because um, this will be in play. But for my money, I'm giving states in his own state of Minnesota. I'm also giving him Wisconsin. And I'm also giving him Michigan right here. So that puts him at a large lead of 332 to 135. And I'm also giving Strom Thurmond Virginia because I think he has more appeal here, especially this was the old Confederacy. Iowa would have to go for states because of the farm subsidies that puts him at 342, while Missouri and Illinois. I think Illinois, I think Stason would win the state of Illinois. That puts him at 370. And then Thurman would have 126. So the last state we haven't called is Missouri. 
so that would be the bellwether state before so Missouri tends to lean with the winner so I think Stacy would also win in that state because he's more Midwestern than Thurman who's pretty much Southern and he would probably lose it by 1% Illinois would be also under 2%, and the rest of the states that I called would probably be beyond 5 to 8%. So, this would be the final map. Uh, Alex Stacen would become uh, the first president from Minnesota had he been the nominee. So, 385 electoral votes to Strom Thurmond's 146. So that would be my first out in the history, out in the election. This is my friend Duvera saying good day to all of you.